Good morning, our dearest students. Ramadan Mbarak Alaikum. Today we will extend our knowledge about numbers and we will get to know rational numbers. So rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction P over Q, where P and Q are integers and Q does not equal to zero. So what we will learn today? Today we will learn how to graph rational numbers on a number line, how to compare and order rational numbers, and how to convert fractions into decimals and identify the type of decimals. So let's start. Of course, all of you remember natural numbers are the set of counting numbers. If I will ask you to count, so all of you, you will count for me like one, two, three, four, and so on. If to the counting numbers, we will add a zero. So that means I'm talking about the whole numbers. So whole numbers are the set of natural numbers with zero included. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. And now all of you, you know, we have negative numbers and we have positive numbers. Okay, so integers are the set of a whole numbers and their opposites along with zero. So that means negative two, and two, negative one, and one, and zero is a quarter. So now we will extend our knowledge. Have a look. You have a picture in front of you, right? So the yellow circle shows you whole number. That means only positive number with zero. If I will extend in the blue circle, so what did I do? I add net negative numbers to the positive numbers. So that means I have integers, okay? But in our real life, we are not dealing only with the whole numbers, right? We have so many different numbers, like for example, decimals, fractions, whole numbers, okay? Mixed numbers, mixed numbers in fraction form, mixed number in a decimal form, positive and negative numbers. So all of them together, all of them together, it will be rational numbers. So in mathematics, rational number, a rational number that can be written as a fraction. And rational number can be positive and can be negative. And most of the numbers, and the number that people use in everyday life are rational numbers. So rational numbers include fractions, include integers, include decimals, okay, person. So all of them are rational numbers. So the main definition of rational number is a number that can be written as a fraction a over b where a and b are integers and b does not equal to zero but every rational number can be expressed as a decimal by dividing numerator by denominator and we have two types of decimals terminating decimal, decimal that ends, and we have repeating decimals, the decimal does not terminate. In case of repeating decimals, we will use a bar notation, which is a bar or a line placed over the digit that, digit or digit that repeats. So let's talk about each one in details. So, today's vocabulary as terminating decimal, repeating decimals, bar notation, and rational numbers. Have a look at first example. We need to convert fractions into decimals. Why into decimals? Because we are more familiar with decimals, and in our 
our real life, we are dealing with the decimals more often than fractions. And for us, easy to compare numbers in decimal forms than, than in fractions. So how to convert fraction into decimals? By long division. So what do we need to do? We need to divide numerator by the denominator. So let's divide 5 over 16. So 5 over 16 gives you 0. So that means I will place a decimal point and I will add 0 to the 5. Now, 50 divided by 16 gives me 3. 3 times 16 gives me 48. 50 minus 48 gives me 2. So I will add a 0. So 20 divided by 16, 16. Again, I will subtract. I will get 4. Then to the 4, I will add 0, 40 divided by 16, and so on. So, but you can see at the end, okay, I have a 0 at the end. So that means this is a terminating decimal because it's end. And my answer is 0 0.3125. Have a look at the second example. I need to divide 13 by 33. So 13 divided by 33 gives me zero. So I will add a decimal point and zero to the 13. 130 divided by 33 is three. So 99 minus 31, I will add zero. So nine, 297 minus Again, I have 13, so I will add a zero. Then again, I have 31, I will add zero. So again, I have 13, so I need to add zero. So you can see here, okay? So it's a repeating, why? Because I have the same button, which is repeatable. And here, what do I have? 39, 39, and 39. So that means, okay, this is a repeating decimal because it has a repeating pattern of a numbers. Now, it's very helpful sometimes, okay, when I have a repeating pattern, just to, okay, to repeat it at least three times, it's enough. Now, one more example, so let's do it together. So first of all, what do I need to do? I need to divide five by 12 long division. So you can see, right? And now look, again, I have 80 minus 72, then again, 80 minus 72, then again, I have eight. So that means I will add a zero. So I will have 80, 80 divided by 12. So six and 72 minus, so again, and so you can see the remainder will never be a zero. So in this case, I can stop it. And how I will write my answer, so 5 over 12 is 0 0.4166, or I can write it only 0 0.416 and place a bar notation above digit 6. Why above only digit 6? Because only digit 6 is repeatable. So I have to be very accurate when I'm placing a bar notation. One more example. So here I have a negative fraction and I need to rewrite it as a decimal. So when we have a negative fraction, okay, the process is the same. We will divide as with the positive fraction and write the negative sign in front of the decimal on the other end. Okay, so let's do it together. So I will divide as a positive fraction. The process is the same. So divide two by nine, and you can see the answer. And we have the pattern, right? The pattern, as we said, it's enough to do it only three times. So to make sure, so number is 
repeatable. So finally, what do I have? I can say, so negative two over nine equal to the negative zero point and two, 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 or I can write only as zero point two and place a note and place bar notation over the digit two. So do it on your own. And I hope all of you, you got the same answer, 0 0.1. And we have a bar notation about digit 1. So please, all of you, have a look here. We have here to convert fraction to the decimal. It's done perfectly without any mistakes. But only at the end, look at the bar notation. It's above two digits. And this is a mistake, why? Because in this case, my number will be 0 0.53. And again, 53 instead of 0 0.533. So that means we have to be very careful with the bar notation. So it's supposed to be on the 0 0.53 and bar notation on the above digit 3. Okay, because as we said here, okay, because it's written above two digits, so that means it will be this one answer. So it's going to be 0 0.5353, 53, which is wrong. So now, here we have a mixed number. Can you see? A mixed number, and we need to rewrite it as a decimal. So when we need to rewrite a mixed number as a decimal, it can be written as a heavy fraction, okay? And this is the first way. So I can rewrite it as a heavy fraction, then I will do long division. I will divide eight by three. So I will get 2.6 repeatable, okay? And at the end, I need to place negative sign in front of the decimal okay so my answer here is negative 2.6 and bar notation above digit 6 or i have other option how to rewrite mixed number as a decimal okay have a look here please all of you i'm not gonna use whole number at all i will put it aside I'm going to deal only with the fraction. So I will take fraction 3 over 4. I will do long division. So I will divide 3 by 4. And I will get the answer 0 0.75. So what did I do? I convert my fraction to the decimal. Then step number 2. My decimal, which is 0 0.75, I will add it to the whole number. So finally, I have 6.75. So in case if we have a mixed number, we have two ways to convert it to the decimal. To rewrite it as a heavy fraction and do long division. Or I can work only with the fraction and at the end, I will add whole number to the decimal. Both ways are correct. It's up to you how to do it. So. Let's do for first example. We have to compare two numbers. In this type of questions, we have two steps. First step, I need to rewrite. I need to rewrite my fraction as a decimal. So step number one, I will divide three. I will divide three by eight. Okay, so of course it will be zero point. Then I will add, so, I have three 
So minus 24, 6, I will add 0. So 7, 7 times 8 gives me 56. So 4, I will add 0. So 5, so minus 40, so 0, 0. So that means negative 3 over 8 equivalent to the negative 0 0.375. Step number two, I will compare them. So step number two, on this side I have negative 0.375. On other side I have negative 0.413. So here I will compare by place value. So let's do it together. So I have once and once zero is the same. Then decimal point, decimal point. Then what do I have? Three and four. Okay. So which number is greater? Negative three or negative four? Of course, negative three is greater than negative four because negative three is closer to the zero. So that means three, I can say three over eight negative is greater than negative 0 0.413. Let's do next example. So here we have set of rational numbers and we need to list them from the greatest, from the least to the greatest. Okay, so now First thing, what do we need to do? We need to rewrite fractions as a decimals. So now I need to rewrite this number. So it will be negative 2.88. And this number is negative 2.1. And here, what do I have? Negative 0.46. So now I have to compare those three numbers. So as can as you can see, everywhere I have two as a whole number. So that means I can cross them. So now I need to compare now negative four, negative eight, and negative one. So all of you, of course, you know the greatest negative number is negative one. So that means negative two point one. It will be the greatest number. Now I have two numbers to compare, 4 and 8. So of course, negative 8 is less than negative 4. Why? Because it is far away to the left from the 0. Okay, so that means the least number, it will be 2.88 and negative 2.88. 46 in the middle, and the greatest number, it will be negative 2.1. So this is how to order set of rational numbers. So first of all, of course, we need to rewrite them as a decimals. Why? Because as we said, compare decimals, it's much easier than to compare fractions. Now have a look at this question. Here we have four numbers in the table, okay? So we need to convert them to the decimals. Then we need to order from the least to greatest, okay? So step number one, as we said, we need to convert. So let's do it together. So first number, it will be 2.45. The second number will be 2.1, but repeatable. So that means I have to place bar notation above digit 1. Then next number is 2.1 terminating. And the last number, 2.45 repeating. So almost I have same digits, but repeating and terminating. 
So now let's think. I will write 2.1 and I will write 2.1 repeating. Now, if I need to add to repeating decimals, if I need to rewrite it without bar notation, so that means it will be one, 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 as you remember, right? Now, if I need to add digits to terminating decimals, so that means it will be zero. So that means on this side, I have 2.10. On this side, I have 2.11. And I'm dealing with the positive numbers. So now, which number is greater, 10 or 11? Of course, it's 11. So that means, in other words, what can I say? So if I have two decimals with the same exactly digits, but one of them is terminating and other one is repeating. So repeating, it will be greater than the terminating one. So that means 2.1 terminating less than 2.1 repeating. The same thing we have with the second set of numbers, which is 2.45 terminating and 2.45 repeated. Why? Because if I need to add here more digits, so it will be 45, 45, 45, and here I will add zeros. So that means if I will order them from the least to greatest, so first number it will be 2.1, then 2.1 repeating decimal, then 2.45, then 2.45 repeating, okay? So clear how it works? So let's continue. And now we will talk about how to graph set of rational numbers. So first of all, of course, we need to convert, we need to convert fraction to decimal. So in our case, if I will divide one over five, so that means I have 0 0.2 negative. Then I have a positive number, 2 and 3 over 5. And again, I need to rewrite it in a decimal point. So it will be 2.6 positive. And now have a look. In this set of numbers, I have negative and I have positive numbers. So that means my number line should be with the positive and with the negative parts. When we are have a rational number, so that means we, are, we have to take in our consideration, so we have to increase the distance between whole numbers. Of course, it should be equal spaces, but we have to increase the distance among the whole numbers. Why? Because this space we're going to divide into parts to place our fractions and decimals. Usually, usually, okay, we're dividing it in five equal parts. So each part is 0 0.2. So let's do it together. So I have 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1. So 1 1.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 2. And the same thing from the other side. Of course, you can divide it by 0 0.1, but it will be very crowded or you need a bigger space. So it's completely up to you, but usually we are doing by 0 0.2. And now very important thing, all of you, you know, the number line is an extendable line from both sides. So that means I can extend it to the left and to the right. And of course, I don't need the whole number line. I need only the part of number line. And you need to decide which part is suitable 
for you and which one is reasonable for you. Have a look here. I have the break test number 2.6 positive. That means I didn't exceed three. So that means for me is enough to take number line from zero till three. Because I don't have four, I don't have five, so need no need for me to go far away. So now let's place first number which is 0 0.2 so 0 0.2 that means it will be on the negative part it will be on the negative part and let's find it so we said our division by 0 0.2 so that means the first one 0 0.2 so that means i will place it over here next number is 0 0.7 so let's count 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So 0 0.7, it will be in the middle between the 0 0.6 and 0 0.8. Now I have next number, which is 2.6. That means I have to go to the positive side. So this is my zero, this is my one, this is my two. Now I have 2.6. So let's count 2.2, 2.4, 2.6. So here I will plot my two and three over five. And the last number is negative 1.8. So again, I will move to the negative one and then let's count together. So 1.2.4.6.8. So here I will plot negative 1.8. So let's do together one more example. So as we said, we need to grab the set of the rational numbers on the number line. So first of all, I need to rewrite fraction as a decimal. So here it will be 1.7, then I have 1.5. Then 2 over 5, it gives me 0 0.4, and I have negative 0 0.6. So now, so again, I have positive and I have a negative numbers. So that means my number line should be with the positive and with the negative side. My greatest number is 1.7 or my least number is 1.7. So that means I will not exceed two. So that means the space for me from zero to two on both sides is enough. Why? Because I'm not gonna move, okay? I'm gonna move, okay, after two. So let's start. So first number is negative 1.7. So this is my zero, my negative one. Let's count 1.2, 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 1.8. So that means it will be here in the middle. I will plot it over here. Okay. Now my next number is 1.5. So this is my one. So let's count one, two, so 0 0.2. 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So that means I'm going to plot it over here between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. Now, next number is 0 0.4. So start from 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4. So it's over here. And the last number is 0 0.6. So let's start 0 0.2 negative, 0 0.4 negative, and this is 0 0.6 negative. Now I need just to write the number. So here is 1.7 negative. Here I have negative 0 0.6. Here I have positive 0 0.4. And the last number is 1.5 is over here, 1.5 positive. So this is 
Thank you for all of you. Ramadan Kareem. Taqabbal Allah siyamakum. Wa kul'am wa intu bakhira.